Hi everyone, this is Dari from Palo Alto. Today we're going to talk about how to deploy uh, Prisma XS ZTNA connector in AWS uh, workload. Uh, last video spoke about how to deploy ZTNA connector with one arm uh, mode, today with two arm. So what we need in AWS, so we need uh, one VPC. Inside this VPC, we're going to use uh, three subnets. Uh, in one arm, we get, we used uh, two subnet, but in two arm, we're going to use three subnet and three route table. So the first subnet we called public. And as you can see here, inside this subnet, we're going to put it the VPC Internet Gateway and as well as VPN NAT Gateway. So here, uh, uh, this subnet they call public. Uh, the next hub for this subnet, I mean, if anyone need quite zero or default route to go to the internet, should be go to the internet gateway. So this is the first subnet and the first route table. So second, two subnet for a private network. As you can see, this is, they call it one subnet private, and this is application subnet to private. So uh, the first port, which is port number one, as you can see with the subnet one, this is, they have a route table. It has a one route table, as you can see, and this route table say anything or any default route wanted to go should be go through the NAT gateway. So simply this one will send the traffic go to the NAT gateway here. Okay, so from here go to the NAT gateway, everything. Here, you don't need to use anything because here the default route will say everything local here. So anything going back and forth from the ZTNA connector should be go through the NAT gateway. The NAT gateway, everything from NAT gateway going to the internet should be go to the internet gateway. I'm going to show you this all in AWS, then after that we work from there. All right, in uh, AWS here, I start with the VPC. I'm going to show you what I configure it in AWS uh, VPC. Uh, first, uh, I have a, a VPC here they call ZTNA-VPC. And this is one VPC for this lab. As you can see, this is 10.0.0.16. 10, I have a three subnets. One subnet they call LAN, which is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 1, 0. And another one, a subnet WAN, which is included the internet gateway and NAT gateway, I'm going to show you in a minute here, 10, 10, 2. And another subnet, which is they call LAN, port number one for ZTNA connector. This is we're going to use 10, 10, 3, 0. So simply, we're going to deploy ZTNA connector to ARM and to ARM this VM uh, or this ZTNA connector, we included two port, port number one, which is going to go to the internet through the NAT gateway, as you can see here for this subnet. And another port, which is port two, we're going to go to the LAN. So anything in the LAN or any application in the LAN, they not touch to the internet, Instead of that, just touch to the ZTNA connector instead. So once it's done here, uh, I'm going to show you as well here very quick internet gateway. So I have internet gateway connected to the VPC, ZTNA VPC. Then I have NAT gateway as well. And you can see uh, this is my NAT gateway. And my NAT gateway is connected to the second subnet, 10.10.2.5. And this is a public IP help Lynette going to the internet. Now, once it's done here, I back to the route table. Route table is important. Just pay attention here. The first route table I have for LAN, there is nothing in the LAN route table here. Just normal. I just put it the LAN network here on it. The subnet for the WAN, which is internet gateway. I just go here. Uh, as you can see, this is the join the subnet 10.10.2.0. I have a route. I say anything or default route should be sent to the internet. As you can see, this is internet gateway. Now, how about the third route table? Third route table for ZTNA connector. As you can see here, if I go to this route table, I said uh, in this route table, 
I configure it any default route should we go to the NAT gateway as you can see here. All right, uh, you need as well DNS, uh, local DNS. So you can configure that if we go to services, there is a route 53. In the route 53, you can create a zone. So I created zone or local zone. I'm gonna show you here. This is a local zone, I call it ztna.local. So all my application we're gonna use, this is as a domain. So I just create the domain here and create manual name for this DNS uh, name for two application. I'm going to show you the application as well. So once your private <coughs> zone co configure it here in route 53, don't forget to turn on the DNS capability in PC, VPC. So you go back to VPC, then go to your VPC, which is here. So just go to the actions and go to uh, edit VPC and make sure enable DNS resolution here, uh, enable DNS hostname as well, because this is help you to use the DNS locally by uh, route 53. All right, I moved to EC2. Uh, I have two application in EC2. This is two instance, Linux uh, instance and each one I install in it uh, Apache as an application just for test. As you can see the application number one, the get IP 10101121 which is from the LAN subnet as well as the application two get the same range of IP from the LAN 10101246 as you can see. There is nothing special nothing no any elastic ip or public ip on it is all private so the plan to access this two application by global protect by prism access through the ztna connector all right just to make a simple here back to the diagram so the simply the application here so the application connected in ztna connector in the port 2 so the next hub for application will be ztna connector and the next hub of the ZTNA connector through the port number one will be NAT gateway. And finally, the NAT gateway, if need to access back and forth connected to the internet, the next hub for the NAT gateway will be internet gateway. So this is uh, very important. In terms of the user, the user coming from Prism Access through the tunnel, tunnel go through the NAT, NAT go through the ZTNA connector, ZTNA go or send the traffic to the application. All right, this is the AWS side configuration. Let's try to configure or deploy ZTNA connector in AWS. So back again to AWS, I will put it here in the search bar, just a Prism Access and I go to marketplace in marketplace ZTNA connector virtual appliance from here I just continue subscribe then after that continue then from here I gonna pick two arm deployment here this, once I say continue here there is a, a here what the configuration in the uh, cloud formation here then after that I will say launch now this is the template put it in the bucket uh, sc3 url so just next then here very important thing i say ztna aws as you can see here they ask me which uh, vpc first so i say okay in the same vpc then they ask me here specific the public subnet for the internet port so if you remember in the diagram, this guy will going to be in the internet and the NAT gateway, which is port number one. So here I will select LAN port number one for ZTNA connector because this is going to the internet. Now they ask me, okay, specific private application. Of course, this is going to the LAN here, as you can see here. Now once it's done here, I back again to require ZTNA connector details. I just put it the name, put it any name here, ZTNA AWS. Now here they ask me for license key and secret key, which is I have to create uh, the ZTT inside the Prisma access. Then I get the two 
keys and I put it here. So let's jump into Prism Access to get these two keys here. All right, before to start to configure ZTNA uh, connector or they call it ZTT, Z Zero Trust Network Access uh, Tunnel Terminated here in, in the Prism Access, you need to configure the pool of IP, application IP and connector IP address. This is simply you go to the workflow, then Prism Access, then Prism Access here. Then after that, you can go here and put it the IP address. We recommend it to use the IP address 164, 165. So 64 will be for the application pool and 65 is for the connector here. So once it's done here, you need to push the configuration and send the configuration to the cloud and save it. Then after that, you can configure the ZTT uh, zero Trust Network Access Tunnel terminated inside the Prisma Access. All right, here you can configure the ZTNA connector. You need enable. I already enabled it here. It was the option here to enable, so I create uh, just a group here. All right, the group name, I can just put it AWS group name that like this, default, then after that, create the group. Once the group is ready, you can go to configure the... Uh, configuration the connector so I go to the connector here create the connector here I call the connector here uh, ZTNA uh, AWS 01 or just one then I put it that one in the group just I created now uh, you can download the ZTNA connector VM here if you want to deploy in your uh, on-prem data center but right now it's just inside the AWS, which is we can upload it from marketplace. I'm going to show you in a minute. Once it's done here, so just to create the connector, the connector will create it here. Uh, then after that should be defined the application going to be used inside the tunnel. So I will put it the application later on. I need just to make the connectivity first up and running. The tunnel is up and working first. So you can see the tunnel here, they give you something they call a key and secret. So we need these keys to deploy the ZTNA connector inside the AWS workload, provide the key and secret key here, as you can see. So this, we gonna copy the key here from Prism Access and back to here. Put it the key here, copy the secret then secret key as well just put it here once it's done here this is the single port static ip so you don't need to change anything just next is the confirm the next as you can see this is the configuration so this deployment take a few minutes uh, aws here then after that i go to the ec2 I can see the ZTNA AWS is completed here and up and running. Is get the, they get private IP as you can see 10.1.1.10.10.1.145. This is from the LAN subnet. Now, once it's completed here, I have to go back to Prism Access to see if the tunnel up. So I just go to uh, Prism Access. So this is my Prism Access as you can see. The tunnel is up as you can see here and get the uh, IP public IP private IP from the range 165 as well as the uh, Prism access location create the components here in US East near to the AWS uh, components as well cloud so uh, this is the name and look likes up as you can see so now I gonna add the application uh, after that from here so I will configure the application. I already configured two application. So you can see this application 01, application 02 with the URL or FAQDN name, application 01, application 02, .ztna.local as you can see here. How to configure the application from here, just put in the name. Then after that, these uh, or this application should be under which group so AWS then what is the FAQDN name I just pick the app01.ztna.local which is the same FAQDN name in AWS in the route 53 in the private zone once it's done here I pick the port 80 
TCP, then after that, create. So I created two applications, as you can see, both of them is up. Now the time to test to see if these two applications access by a mobile user uh, from the Prism access. So let's jump into the user side and make uh, connected to this application to make sure it is accessible from the user side. All right, this is the user, as you can see, is connected to my workload in a Prism access. If I go here, just need to make sure the connection is correct, connected to the vpnc.lab here, as you can see. So you can see this is the full name here and is ready for connected. So back to the user and see, try the user, see connected or no. Perfect. It's connected to the VPN. I go to the internet browsing here. Then I just try to write app01.local. Maybe I go with new application. I copy this. Just go with incognito windows just to make sure there is no cache. So enter. As you can see, this is my Apache for uh, configuration uh, for application. I just simulated as an application here so if i go here and try to access application number two which is zero two as you can see both of application is accessible here if i go to check the ns lookup very quick cmd and ns lookup so in ns lookup if i put it the local or app zero one ztna local so enter, as you can see, get IP from the pool we assigned to Prism Access earlier, which is 164. Uh, if I go to check the application too, should be also get from the same range. If you remember, 164 is for application, 165 for uh, connector. If I back to connector here, uh, if I go here in the Prism Access and see the connector here, as you can see, the connector get 165 uh, IP range. Now the tunnel is up, everything should be good. If you want to monitoring some traffic, some bandwidth for these applications, simply you can go to monitor and you go to application. In the application, there is something they call ZTNA connector target application. So when you click on it here, then after that, you can see the application, how it looks like in terms of monitoring. So you can go to application one. And in application one, you can see uh, some information related to the bandwidth here, how the user access to this application, very few connection here. Then you can as well go to application two and see the uh, performance. So the very important thing as well, if you want to check the connector itself, this is application. So it's simply go to monitoring and go to the uh, data center here. In the data center here, we have a ZTNA connector. This is the show you the performance and the, the, how the performance look like for the ZTNA connector in the cloud itself. So you can go to AWS group here. You can see this is the connector or one connector on it. One click and you can uh, see the device metrics for this connector in terms of CPU, in terms of memory, as well as the bandwidth availability as well. So as you can see, you can monitoring the connector from the Prism Access very easily uh, as well. I hope this was informative for you. Thank you for watching.